So before I start, let me ask you a question which I already saw in the intro. We had been having rains uh, for the last couple of days. So what is rain? I want an answer, please. H2O. Sorry? H2O. H2O. Oh. Recycled water. Well, yeah, that's near, very, very close. But what kind of recycled water? Condensed water. Condensed water. That's right, too. Yeah, OK, I'm not going to take a lot of your time. But uh, yeah, it's recycled water. But it's a closed loop recycling of water. And when nature began, recycling began with it. If there was no recycling, I don't think we would have been all together here today talking about anything about the, or anything, any subject. Because recycling had been from day one when nature started, recycling was there. Water, uh, nature recycles water in a very systematic way, in a very closed loop way. What that means is basically nature takes water from the oceans, it evaporates, it condenses. And in doing this process, nature doesn't use any chemicals, doesn't use any, like, it doesn't produce any emissions. There are no byproducts of that. And if we have such a similar project, you know, that would change the whole world. But what has happened is instead of following nature, mankind has been out so good to so good to nature so far that they have misused nature as much as they can. They have used nature utmost. They have been the nature has been exploited. We have begun against nature on and on, on and on, on and on. And now a stage has come where everybody wants to be green. And before the green, the recycling revolution was already there. It was there for centuries. It was there for I don't know how many years. But recycling has always been there, and it will be always there. But because of man's greed, because of laziness, what has happened is the whole world is changing. You see the effect of the nature changing, the effect uh, more tornadoes are coming in. Just two days back, we had a, a tornado warning in Edmonton. And uh, I can tell you something, a secret. My factory, which is in the Edmonton Waste Management Center, is a disaster shelter. I'll tell you more about that later on. <laughs> so all of you who are listening, you can sign up with me in case of disaster. <laughs> so that's the rain cycle, which we all learned when we were, I think, in the sixth or seventh grade. I just want to recoup that, bring it back again. We should always remember this rain cycle. Because this rain cycle is the basis of nature, is the basis of our sustenance, is the basis of what we are today. Because this is one cycle which everybody, and a child, and an old person, a young person, everybody understands what the rain cycle is. But nature has done everything in the same manner. Everything has been recycled from eons, number of years. Everything has been recycled. Mankind has been recycled. Animals have been recycled. Plants have been recycled. Everything has been recycled, recycled, and recycled. But what has happened is now, because of industrialization, the first, I think, um, uh, recycling major plants came up, I think, during the First World War and the Second World War. There was shortage of ammunition. There was shortage of arms, guns. So they started melting the metal and producing guns and ammunition with that. So that was the major industrialization of recycling. And then later on came on the municipalities. Earlier, there were no municipalities. The garbage, because of the laziness of people and the greed, we just thought of making products which can be just thrown out, which can be just uh, like you see how many cell phones we buy in a year. Oh, there's a new model. A mom, get me a new phone. Dad, please get me a new phone. No, get me this, I want. My friends have got this type of phone, I want this. And what happens to the other phone? It goes in the garbage. I deal with garbage, so I know what I get in the garbage. <laughs> Brand new things I get packed sometimes. And I'm surprising that people just don't even think before they throw. And they don't understand what's happening, or how this is being produced. Take the care of printers. I have a printer in my office, and uh, the purchase department came in and said, we need to buy more printers. I said, why? Can't you get refills, ink cartridges? They said, no, the ink cartridge cost is just $5 less than the actual cost of the new printer. 
and that printer is outdated. So I have 12 printers lying in my office of no use. Now we have to change those habits. If we have to worry about nature, we have to worry about this. If we don't want more earthquakes, more tornadoes happening, we don't want uh, mankind to suffer, see the sufferings in the US last week, uh, last month, the big tornado, a kilometer wide or three kilometer wide, it touched down, and how many lives were lost, how much loss was there to the nature, because this is all what nature is throwing us back to us. He says, mankind, beware, beware, I'm still. But nature is doing its part. Nature won't let us down, I can guarantee you that. But mankind has to be really, really careful when they treat nature. Now, how, this all, how all this began in my life? Let me tell you something about that. Let me go back to my childhood. This is a picture of my school. I was uh, born and brought up in a small village in uh, India near Mumbai. And uh, we were seven siblings. My dad was the one who taught me recycling. He was the instrumental in teaching me composting. He took me to nature. He used to take me to nature and explain me things. And then it got into my blood. And I would, like, as I grew up, I started growing to nature myself, watching the butterflies, how they would hop from one flower to another flower. And I said, what are they doing? So I actually observed them carefully. And before I could learn what pollination was, my dad had already explained to me, and I had observed it practically happening. I had seen how the trees would have the fruits at a particular months of the year, or they were flowering at the particular months of the year, and how rainfall would come, how it would affect the nature. You know, all these things really got me in very closely connected with nature. And as I grew up, as I grew up, more and more my uh, interest went towards nature. I just went to study more of nature. I studied botany and did my BSc in Bombay. And then I thought of continuing my career in just following nature. I said, let us follow in nature. Yeah. So always I've been telling people, be in tune with nature, and nature will take care of itself. Do you find me in the picture? <laughs> Sometimes I get mistakes. I don't find myself. So what has happened is, like, as, as I've been growing, I've been seeing the industrial revolution taking place, uh, the pollution around the world. You see the pollution which is happening, and uh, people are saying composting, and we put the, our uh, uh, cut grass and composting, we send it to the landfills. And in the landfills, you know, landfills are not good. We have to be managed. The uh, society has to spend a lot of money. We all pay, I think, a chunk of money to the municipalities every year. I know there are municipality guys here. I don't want to say anything, but they're, they're doing a good job. <laughs> they're doing a good job. They are actually controlling our waste. They're doing a fantastic job for us. If there were no municipalities, we would not have been able to live in Edmonton. They have done a fantastic job of controlling this population. And when you see this garbage, what I find is in the garbage, 40% of garbage consists of paper. And where does paper come from? Paper come from where? Not from the super staples. <laughs> you know where paper comes from? Trees. Wow. So everybody knows what the value of trees is. Now, taking, uh, like, using all my experiences and all these things, you know, like I have come out with a nice uh, proposal which I feel is going to revolutionize the world. We'll see how paper which is the most important component of waste, can be saved, can be recycled, can be processed in such a manner that we all can be benefited. Now, see the footprint of the paper, in, just alone paper in the world. And as we see, like we are, have the largest footprint. My footprint is there, besides on the slide, it shows like the North Americans, we have the largest footprint of paper in the world. Now, we have to take control of that. We have to be miser when we use paper. We have to use less, less, and less paper. And here I have uh, got a very good uh, answer for that. Now that's a company. This is a company which uh, belongs to me. And, like, and the city of Edmonton has been kind enough. They have given me an opportunity to showcase my idea about closed loop recycling. That's when I come back again to that closed loop recycling of water. The same concept I have used in uh, making this paper, closed loop recycling of paper. 
Now, what does that mean? Basically, what we are doing is we are taking paper from the hotels, from the motels, from the hospitals. We just take the cotton clothes from there. So the hotel guys actually in Edmonton, they don't give me any rooms. That's a pity. Like, I have to find some, some small place or go and stay with a friend if I have to in Edmonton. Because the moment I go there, they find their bed sheets and towels vanished. <laughs> oh, they always keep on checking my bags. I tell them, please, I am a recycler, but not a thief. But they don't listen. They will know you will take. And next day, it's gone, because they will not find it. There will be no proof of it. <laughs> so they have to check me there and there. And then we get the paper from the offices. We get the paper from the government departments. We get from the businesses. So what I say, it's a partnership between you and me. You give me your paper. I'll recycle it. I'll pulp it in my factory in Edmonton, at the Edmonton Waste Management Center. We take these clothes. And uh, we pulp them separately, mix them together in my own secret recipe. <laughs> yes, it's a secret recipe. People ask me, oh, why didn't you patent it? I said, sure, I applied for a patent. I got a worldwide patent. And then they asked me, give us the secret, how you combine these two fibers. I said, fine, if I give you that, this secret of this, then I would be coming and speaking here, because there will be another 100 million people copying that whole process. So I, didn't, I just withdrew my application for the patent, and I kept it as a secret recipe. I said, if Coke and KFC can keep their recipe secret, why can I keep it? <laughs> so that's what we do here at the Edmonton Waste Management Center, is that we basically collect all the clothes from the hospitals. We get from all the hotels have signed up. We get all their towels and bed sheets. And even the city of Edmonton has been kind enough. Like, they have put special bins in all the eco stations and uh, for clothing. So there are special clothing bins kept in all the eco stations, or you could just bring your clothes and see our factory as well, bring your clothes for recycling. And mind well, people who are all wearing jeans, next time when you come to my factory, don't wear jeans, because I love jeans, and I make paper out of there right away, there and there. <laughs> so we will let you go back only wearing paper. <laughs> now. Now let us see what difference, what is the effect of this plant for the world? Like, what are we saving for the world? Like, we were talking of the trees, how many trees and what not? Let us see that. Right now, this plant has a capacity of 40 tons per day. So we are going to make 40 tons of paper per day. Now, you may think that's a big amount. It's 40,000 kilograms, or it's about close to 100,000 pounds a day of paper we are going to make in Edmonton. But are we able to sell it? And you'll be surprised if I tell you that I am just catering to 10% of Edmonton's needs. Just oh, less than 10%, not even 10%, just less than 10% of Edmonton's needs. So we have to cut down our usage of paper. Now, if I show you the next slide, you can see the facilities. Like, if Edmonton is duplicated around the world, every 1 million population can have a 40-ton plant. Now, there are 668 cities in the world which has more the population of more than one million. And when you see that every day, what we are doing is, like basically we will be creating 80,000 jobs. 80,000 jobs, and I'll tell you at what price. President Obama would really like it, but he wants to create a lot of jobs. <laughs> and in US, we have interest from about 34 cities so far. And see this, uh, for 40 tons of paper a day, can save 187 million, 40,000 40, gallons of water. This is uh, including all the plants, right? If they have 668 plants around the world, these are the calculations for that. So if they have 668 plants around the world, uh, we have a very good interest from China. The Canadian government and the Chinese government are talking, and they want to have these plants there. And in China alone, this figure would be enough. Because there are so many cities there, they want to have this. And this, the beauty of this whole plant is that it is scalable. It creates local jobs. It uses local raw material. It use just, uh, you have to sell, or sale of end products is local. You don't have to go out, and I don't have to go and sell my paper to Calgary. Because I'm just catering to 8 to 10% of uh, the requirement of Edmonton. So you could actually sell the paper locally. If you're from different cities, you can take this idea and set up a plant in your place, please. That's the future of recycling. So, and if you see that uh, yeah, landfill space, what we are saving is 88,176 cubic yards of land 
every day is being saved. Kilowatts energy, 106,000, 106,880,000 kilowatts of energy saved. And if you see the number of trees, Would you like that number? Yeah. I'll go aside. <laughs> 641,280. And I'll, I'll show it to you and I'll prove it to you how that is. I won't take something out of my wallet. I'm not going to distribute money. And I don't carry this always. Just don't take that wrong. This is tissue paper. Don't take it wrong that I always carry tissue paper in my pockets. <laughs> now, this tissue paper is exactly one gram in weight, it is three portions of a small tissue paper, toilet tissue. This is exactly one gram in weight. Now, we have a population of 350 million in North America, US and Canada together has a population of 350 million. And just imagine if everybody just uses only this much amount of tissue paper a day, only this much. Not all the tissue paper what we use outside, the Kleenex paper what we use outside just now while we are having food. Only if everybody used this much amount of tissue paper a day, you know how many trees are being flushed out? We'll just calculate the simple mathematics. 350 million multiplied by one gram is equal to 350 metric tons. Divide by 1,000, divide by 1,000. I'm not going to go into mathematics, but it's, it becomes 350 metric tons. And to make one ton of paper, you need to cut 24 trees. So 350 multiplied by 24 is 8,400 trees flushed out every day every day flushed out from I don't know how many years. So you know how many trees you can save by just having some alternate to this? Now that is the future of recycling is only recycling. There's nothing other than that. So we have to be more and more conscious of recycling. We have to be more and more uh, recycling. Everybody should take part in that. My slogan is join the loop. We always say people join the loop. Join our company, that's all I say, say join the loop, because we are in a loop, we recycle the paper. And the beauty of my project is that paper normally is recycled only five to seven times. But in my project, when I add cotton to it, it gives extra strength to the fibers, it can be recycled umpteen times. You can go on recycling, go on recycling, add more and more cotton. So what happens is you don't cut a single tree. And if the world follows this project, the world would not to cut a single tree for the next 75 years. That's my guarantee. Have the calculations. Thank you. <laughs>